Let's rock and roll. What's happening guys? Mike here from Hammer Fitness. Just so you can take me seriously, I'm going to get rid of this outfit. <laughs> We've got lifeguards approaching. We're going to have to knife all of them. I'm just kidding. Alright, so today I pretty much want to uh, give you guys an explanation and a bit more of a detailed creative way to tell you how carbs works in the body. Alright, so we're going to be talking about the bad high GI, the good high GI, and the low GI. Alright, there is good and bad as well, but I'll get to that on a, a later subject as well. Alright, so if you don't know what high GI, low GI means, that's where we're going to go into depth, and I'm going to show you how it affects your energy. Alright, so this is really important. This is what people have to understand to get the most out of the food they eat. Okay, boom. Wow, it is so funny when I actually didn't even realize before I uh, did this video. As soon as you walk in, carbs, 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 carbs. Oh my god, just surrounded by carbohydrates. Everywhere you see is carbs. Oh, holy shit. Alrighty, so let's rock and roll. Let's go to this aisle for a second. Okay. So for instance, what we want to get is uh, we're searching for, there's a few different types of carbs. So you got your low GI and your high GI. All right, your high GI, your simple carbohydrates, like I've already said, and your low GI, uh, the more complex carbs. But speaking of high GI, you've also got your good, your good sources of high GI, like your fruits and stuff. Right now, what we're going to do is search for uh, your bad high GI. So for example, your Coke. We've got our... High GI, crappy, this isn't necessarily food, but beverages. High GI, crappy, crappy, high GI. Why don't we just get a box of lint? But it's such a good delicacy, it's still a high GI. Let's go this one. High GI. Now we're coming back down to the low GI. Alright, so we went from high GI. Now we're going to low GI, as long as it's uh, usually white is leaning towards the higher side. Uh, and what we're going to look for, let's go for wholemeal. Wholemeal is going to be a lower GI source. So we'll get some bread. Beautiful. Pasta, low GI. Alright, so still carbohydrates on the lower end. Okay, now we got the high GI good, the good high GI, uh, simple carbohydrates. So this is like your fruits, right? So all your apricots, mangoes, bananas, peaches, apples, pears. Okay guys, so this is your main sources of carbohydrates, but this is the visible. Now what you're looking at right here is the the visible type of carbohydrate. So when you look at Coke, when you look at lollies or bread or fruit, um, I'm hoping you think carbohydrates. At least that's what I think. Uh, but there is also a source of hidden carbohydrates that people don't even realize. We're talking, we're talking peanut butter. Right, so you're thinking peanuts turn into like a butter. There is still sugar in it. Right? So it's not added sugar, it's already naturally occurring, but you don't think of that. You don't think there'd be any carbs or any sugars in uh, peanut butter. All right, so other stuff such as, this one gobsmack the crap out of me. That's strawberry jam. Now we're talking the, the good old healthy, all right, high GI carbohydrates. And then their first ingredient is sugar. All right, so whenever you've got something like the first ingredient on a label that means that's what it consists most of so your first ingredient is sugar your second ingredient is strawberries at 40 percent now that's, that's going to come down to a lot of your uh jams and stuff which is ridiculous if you think about it i mean the fruit is flavorsome in itself why the heck would you need uh sugar but that's how they make it all right so that's how it's made anyway but you wouldn't even think of that all right, so those are those hidden carbohydrates or even just uh, hidden sugars more so. So you've got hidden sugars and then hidden carbohydrates where you didn't think carbohydrates would be like your peanut butter but then your hidden sugars as well where you wouldn't think they'd add any more to it but yeah it is. Before I leave this trolley behind there's one thing that I've noticed when buying carbohydrate high foods versus 
protein and fat rich foods all right so i just bought a trolley load well, it's not really a trolley load but let's call it half a trolley load so we've got four bags four bags of carbohydrates where's the total it is only 3175 3175 uh, i literally did my genuine shop yesterday i wish i could show you the receipt for that i already threw it out but it was literally protein, so it was meat and fats, so like your yeah, cheeses, cottage cheese, nuts, and I spent about $110, all right? So that's just the difference, all right? Carbs are cheap. All right, let's rock and roll, back to business. Back to the energy. All right, so right here, we've got an example. We're gonna be using these balls in the pool all right, to demonstrate the effects of energy, all right? So we've got a a smaller version of this ball but it's a bit more denser right so what that means is you're essentially looking at foods like this the bad GI right the bad high GI foods the sugary foods right like your coke your lollies your chocolates and stuff so these foods necessarily they contain a lot of calories for how small they are all right I'll compare the calories soon as well when you've got your good high GI foods as well all right they're not as dense, right, but they're still high GI. Right? Usually the high GI foods are going to spike in energy and drop again. And you'll see what happens in the water with these balls in a second. And then you've got your low GI. These are your more complex molecules of carbs, which I'll explain on the whiteboard soon. But this is what demonstrates it's a lighter ball, right, but it's a bit bigger. Right? So usually with the low GI foods, you're going to be able to take out more mass. Uh, but they're a more complex molecule and they're going to essentially demonstrate more sustained energy. Uh, we're going to see what they do in the pool in a second. As this is going to demonstrate if you've just eaten any of these high GI foods, so either your fruit or any sugary crappy high GI foods like your chocolates and stuff, we're going to use this ball to demonstrate what your energy does. It's going to spike up straight away. So this ball right here. Okay, so as you noticed, we went up in energy. We came down in energy, all right? And as soon as it hit the water, it sunk really, really quick, okay? And it took a while to come back up. That's literally gonna demonstrate your energy, all right? There is actually a negative. When you drop in blood sugar levels, your energy is gonna go down. All right, now we're gonna go over to the low GI. All right, so the low GI, more sustained, it's bigger. Therefore, it's gonna fill you up a bit more too, all right? All right, so energy, more sustained, and we didn't get as much of a crash. And that's a wrap at the pool, guys. Well done. I don't think these uh, these guys like me in my pirate outfit. They probably <laughs> thought I was quite weird. And I forgot to use my sword, but that's all good. As long as you guys get and understand the principles behind just carbohydrates. I'll be covering protein and fats in another video. But this is literally carbohydrates and the way they affect your body. All right, we're also going to jump across to the whiteboard as well. All right, so stay tuned. All righty, guys. So right here, we've got the whiteboard that's actually going to be able to explain it a little more. All right, so maybe the balls weren't too good of an explanation or demonstration. That was literally just so you could get a visual of what happens. But now I'm actually going to draw what actually happens. All right, so here we've got your high GI. So remember your sugary foods, uh, the more simpler uh, carbohydrate or molecule. So what's going to happen because your body's going to be able to break it down so quick you're gonna get a spike in energy all right so it's usually gonna look like this all right so we're gonna go up see your happy face that's you you're nice and happy and then it's gonna spike down again all right so your body's always got a, a way to pretty much balance out uh, the effects of any food so there's always gonna be like a wave like motion until it pretty much levels out <coughs> All right, so usually it's maybe two, two or more step process, but this is how it usually looks, and it's why uh, you feel so good after you eat sugary foods. All right, this is only one explanation why you feel so good, but this is just your energy all right, and your blood sugar levels. So this is high GI, and this is the time right here. So usually it's a quick spike, and then it's a quick drop, just like the ball did in the demonstration at the pools. Now, that was high GI. All right, now low GI, right? so your more uh, complex molecule of carb, so your breads, your pastas, your rice, 
I did say there was a good and a bad high GI, so your bad uh, high GI with your sugary foods like your chocolate, your sweets, your coke, and then you've got your good uh, high GI foods like your fruits and stuff, which is still good, but they're still going to give you a spike and a drop. Maybe not so much because they're not as dense as the sugary filled foods like your chocolate and sweets. Now you've got your Low GI food, so you can have a more sustained energy. There is still good and bad, I'll get to that in a minute. But this is what it usually looks like. So this is your low GI. Alright, so more sustained energy if it draws on properly. More sustained energy, not so much of a drop. Okay? So you've got a bit more time because your body's actually going to take time to have to break it down to actually utilize for energy. You're still going to get the drop because food, your, your body's going to use the food, so obviously that's where the drop comes from, and the drop in blood sugar levels, which is going to make you feel hungry again. But if you can imagine this bottom bit as the bit where you feel hungry, okay? So if you get this massive drop, guess what? You're going to feel really hungry. And that's where you're going to start snacking on all kinds of crap. If you go for a low GI food, more sustained energy, less drop, and not for as long. Right? You're not going to be as hungry. You'll still get hungry, but that's totally normal. Right? So it's totally normal to be hungry, but you just got to watch out for the low and high GI effects. All right? So this is the main point I want to get at at how carbs affects the body, okay? As soon as you can understand this, you'll probably be able to realize why you feel so hungry and why you feel like you need to keep eating or you need to keep snacking or just to satisfy that little craving. Sometimes you might even just feel like sugary foods because it's a nice hit to the brain and you don't even feel like meat or something that's a bit more replenishing and probably healthier, all right? So usually that's where that happens. I hope this makes sense guys, so high GI, spark, drop, low GI, more sustained energy. All right, so that's what we want to go after, especially when you're dropping weight, mainly because of that uh, hunger. All right, so you don't want to be feeling hungry while you're in a deficit. Alrighty guys, I'm going to give you the comparison now on how foods actually compare, because you're probably wondering well, what amounts should I be eating? And not even necessarily that. It could literally come down to you not even realizing how much calories is in this simple block of chocolate because size isn't always everything. All right, so when it comes to especially carbohydrates, uh, the sugars hidden in foods and the sugars densened in foods like chocolate and like lollies as well is ridiculous. All right, so hopefully this is gonna give you a bit of an example uh, to actually see. Okay, so we're actually going to use these scales so you know that uh, the measurements are actually accurate. Okay, so here we've got some Starburst lollies and here we have an apple. Both of which they are high GI foods, but this is we're going with the bad high GI. This is the good high GI, right? So it's a healthy source of uh, carbohydrate, but in terms of the way it affects the body is uh, quite different, right? The sugar molecules are different, but especially when it comes down to the density of the calories. All right, so check this out. Right here, we've got 450 calories just in these lollies right here. That's not even a handful. All right, then we've got an apple at 80 calories, okay? So you could essentially easily have five of these and you'd still be under the amount of calories. So five apples is less than less than a handful of these Starburst lollies. Okay, this whole punnet of strawberries is only 100 calories. That's it, this whole punnet. Uh, it's pretty heavy, it's 250 grams. This whole box of lint chocolates, you probably won't go through the whole thing, uh, but the whole thing is about 1400 calories. Okay, so now we're gonna compare some chocolate to a banana. Now you probably won't get through this whole box, who knows, you might. But if you did, this whole block of chocolate is 1,100 calories. That could be somebody's daily intake if they wanted to cut weight. Who knows, that could even be somebody's maintenance if they're a pretty small person. I'll go more in depth in another video on the calorie expenditure and how many calories you could be consuming in a day uh, to not uh, gain weight or lose weight. Now, this banana per weight, so usually bananas are around 100 calories per 100 grams. 
And if that's the case with this one, that means you can have 11 bananas. I don't think you can get through 11 bananas in a week. Maybe you can, but who knows. That's versus this one block of chocolate. All right, this whole block, 11 bananas. Or that could be close to 14 apples. Okay, now we're gonna compare some Coke as well. And I'm pretty sure this Coke has a little bit less sugar than Coca-Cola itself. All right, so this one cup or 250 ml is literally sitting at about 125 calories. But here's the catch, this, this is from just pure sugar. All right, there's no, there's no other nutrients in this thing. So it's fizzy sugar pretty much. If you think about four grams per teaspoon, this has 28 in it. Okay, can you even work that way, uh, out what that is? That's seven, seven, seven teaspoons of sugar. Just imagine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In this one cup is seven teaspoons of sugar. I'm not gonna say that anymore. Okay guys, here we've got a bag of pasta. Now per 100 grams, uh, which is usually gonna be an average serving, so anywhere between one to 200 grams, depending on your diet. So here we've got 500 grams or half a kilo sitting at 1800 calories. Now I'm sure you're not gonna go through the whole bag, uh, but if you did that can consist of uh, a whole day, I mean, I'd usually probably get uh, through a bag if I wasn't on ketosis, uh, which is no carbs. So these poor suckers, I won't be getting to eat these. But one serving is 360 calories, okay? So this is a low GI, which means, remember back to the board, we're gonna have a nice sustained lift and sustained drop again, all right? So it's not gonna be as bad as if we went to the sugary food, which is gonna cause that spike and then drop again, all right? Okay guys, I wanted to give you one more tip before we finish up. Now this is a crucial bit to make sure you understand how fat is burned, okay? When we consume carbohydrates, we get a spike in insulin. Uh, it almost looks the exact same as our blood sugar levels, okay? Because pretty much insulin is gonna copy our blood sugar levels to get rid of the stuff out of our, blood, um, out of our bloodstream. Now, as I said, high GI, if you can imagine these little red flames, if you can see them, that's where we burn all our fat. Now, if we get a spike in insulin, or carbs, drop again, there's our energy. All right, so we're not gonna be burning fat at all, and now we're just gonna be hungry, and we're gonna wanna eat again, and then we're gonna snack again, and it's just this one big hectic cycle. All right, so that's not what we want. Now, the low GI. So, more sustained energy, lower drop. All right, so not so much of a drop, but, we're actually closer to be burning fat. So there's not as much of a spike in insulin, which means we've got more ability to burn fat. So the lower our insulin, the more fat we're actually gonna burn. The lower our carbs, the more fat we're going to burn. And this is where carb cycling comes in good. So when you actually lower your carbs towards the end of the day, that's when you're gonna be able to burn the most amount of fat. All right, so my tip for you is stick to as low a GI as you can to not only not get hunger cravings, but to burn the most amount of fat. And tip number two, lower any carbohydrates or get rid of them at the end of the day to maximize burning the most amount of fat. I hope you enjoyed today, guys. Peace out. <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> oh, pretty. Uh, hope you liked the video, guys. Jump across to our YouTube channel and give that a subscribe to keep up to date on our weekly motivation and tips to help you on your weight loss journey. Also, take a look at the videos down below for some humor, some laughs, and some free workouts and more motivation. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.